Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, soccer fans of all ages, this is Armand Colombo Field here at Marciano Stadium, where tonight it's the first big three matchup of the year as the Durfee Hilltoppers come to town to face your Brockton Boxers once again. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, bringing you all the action from the Peter Farley Press Box here on a very, very hot night. This one... This one is going to be ugly. It is about 100 degrees on the playing surface here at Marciano. And we're joined by not so newly named athletic director, that Kevin Carroll. the most overstated thing I've heard you say in a long time, and I've heard you say many things this, of this that been, are just outlandish, outrageous. It's not 100 degrees on the field. I was just down it's there. It's got to be. It's about 80. By the time the sun goes down, it's going to cool right off, and by the end of the night, it will actually be cool out here. I hope you're right. But we talked to head would coach Denise you, Glennon. Of course I would. You but could, I'm you not would, lying you to you now. We were talking to head coach Denise Glennon before the game. She said the strategy tonight is constant substitutions. She's got a number of players on this roster that can play multiple positions. That's going to come into play tonight. And I really think the other thing that's going to come down to is just, um, you know, conditioning in ball possession and uh, – because, like you did say, it is warm out there. It is early in the season, so I don't think the stamina is quite where it will be in the, the middle of end of October. Um, so a cu couple breaks, and we'll see if uh, our ladies can pull one out here. Because Durfee's, uh, I, th I think they're 3-3-1, three, three and one, and we're 1-5. and five. Yeah, so uh, we're struggling a little bit, but we did this last year. Reckons don't matter if you Reck win the no, division. That's it. <laughs> Just win the big three and you're in. Win and you're in. Simple. Well, Durfee is wearing their away red jerseys, black shorts, black and white trim. Brockton with their home whites. And an opportunity, it's number three down low, and her shot's going to go wide and behind right, the Matt, net. I hate to fly, but I do have to attend to a family matter. Um, so I am out. Be careful with the bees. Don't not, do, not do, do not now, do anything to upset the nest. As far as overstated statements, this is going to be a 1,000 bees living right above our heads. Oh, I see. I think that's an understatement. An understatement. <laughs> I do. I think that that nest up there is just – I don't even want to see what it's like underneath that tin metal flashing that we have up there. Well, there's, uh, there's one way to get this booth renovated. Yeah. Now, they're going to come tomorrow and uh, take care of it. We've got the exterminator coming in to take a look at it. So Hope hopefully he brings his bee suit. Yeah. And there's one buzzing by just coming by to say hi. It'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. But Brockton wearing their home white jerseys, white shorts, red and black trim. And Brockton with a few offensive opportunities early in this game. As Mr. Cairo mentioned, their record for the boxers is 1-5. and five. Durfee coming in at 3-3-1. Three, three, and one. And it is a very, very warm day. It's officially 81 degrees. But I think that's a little bit of an understatement with humidity and dew points and all that other weather mumbo jumbo language. It feels like it's 93. So, it's very, very warm. Brockton with it. Jayla Curran Stewart sending it back to Viola Lothry, as we've been told her pronunciation of her last name is, the senior goaltender for the Boxers. Big week in Boxer Athletics. Of course, we've got a big three matchup tonight. As Durfee faces the Lady Boxers. And then Thursday night right here at Marciano Stadium. It's boys soccer versus BC High. The Eagles coming to town. And then the game everyone's talking about Friday night. Is another Catholic Conference matchup. As the Brockton High football team travels to Havid. Traveling up to Harvard to face the Eagles of BC High. 
Chris Brockton almost pulling out the win here against Catholic Memorial this past Friday. Got down to about four minutes left. Brockton hit a big field goal to bring the score to 10 to nine in the boxers' favor and see him coming right back, driving down the field and scoring the winning touchdown. Durfee with a little bit of pressure in the midfield zone, but not able to break through the boxer's back line. Now a foot race and unable to keep it in bounds are the boxers. to the, I've been told it's some kind of wasp, the wasp's nest, inside the roof of the press box here at Marciano Stadium, and it is huge, there's been probably 100 bees flying around at any given point. They keep whizzing by our fearless cameramen tonight. This is number one with a shot for the boxers, Jayla Smith. And she sends it wide and out of bounds, so a goal kick for the Hilltoppers. Now it's a foot race is number 20 for the Hilltoppers pressuring, able to gain possession at least momentarily before it's cleared out by Olivia Mathelier. And Brockton escapes unharmed. Kayla Karn Stewart. To Lena Marion. Marion back to Smith. And we have a hilltopper a little bit slow to get up. That is number 17. Catherine Callahan, the sophomore, and Brockton with an opportunity, a shot, and it goes wide. Kayla Murphy on the boxer's opportunity, and she just shanked it. Kelsey Whitney into the game for the Hilltoppers. Constant substitutions expected for both sides today as Durfee has an opportunity slowing up to stay on sides. Now spinning with and breaking away from the boxer's defender and sending it in on Viola Lothry who makes the easy save. 32 minutes left in the first half. Now Marion trying to send it ahead to number four for the boxes, Alicia Tokman. Broken up at least momentarily by the Hilltoppers. Be a Brockton throwing 
just to the left of the derpy bench. Topin trying to chase it down. It will find its way out of bounds off of Durfee. Another boxer thrown from the football goal line. And it'll be Jayla Curran Stewart throwing it in for the boxers. Murphy tipping it. Durfee able to clear out. And it's going to have to be chased down by number 11, Danelle Davids. He sends it back to Viola Lothry. Early substitutions by the boxers, number five. Kind of like colors. And number 13, Vanessa Dos Anjos. Into the game for Brockton. The sun beginning to set here. At Brockton High. Hopefully it cools off a little bit. Now Lena Marion going for a run on the near side. And Durfee able to break it up and the Hilltopper send it out of bounds. Box a throw in. And it's going to be offsides against the Hilltoppers. Whistled early at the 44-yard line. And now the boxers with an opportunity, a shot, and a goal! That was number eight, Janae Domenci Silva, unassisted on the goal for the boxers, who what seems like the first time this season have an early lead here, only about 12 minutes into the first half, as we're going to take a replay of that goal. As you can see, Janae. Jeanne Dimitri Silva just finding a hole and making no mistake on the shot, beating the Durfee goalkeeper. Remember, Dimitri Silva sat out the last few games with a sprained ankle. Of course, showing no ill effects of that injury. Olivia Shaw into the game. She replaces Lena Marion. Martin pressuring the Hilltoppers yet again. Kayla Smith unable to break through the Hilltoppers defense and now sending it out was number seven, Jayla Curran Stewart. Thank you. 
Megan Ortendahl into the game. She replaces Danelle Davids. Now Durfee with an opportunity and it's going to be whistled off sides yet again. This whistle coming from the official on the far side. It's going to be a Durfee free kick. Why? Durfee had possession in a breakaway. Why would you take away that opportunity from the Hilltoppers to give them a free kick from their own side of the field? Now a high kick ruled against the Hilltoppers, so Brockton will have a free kick. Again, picking up in physicality. Always to be expected when there's a big three-divisional matchup. Three minutes left in the first half. Brockton up one to nothing over big three divisional rival, the Durfee Hilltoppers. Janae Demanche Silva, the lone goal scorer. Throwing for the Hilltoppers from the far side. As we're going to have another boxer substitution. It's going to be number 23 coming into the game. Lara Cardozo. Whistle stoppage penalty called against the Boxers. Free kick from about 50 yards out from net for the Hilltoppers. Durfee able to draw the foul on the 30 yard line. This referee on the near side, very, very particular with his spot of where he puts the balls for free kicks. Sending it directly into the box, loose. Durfee able to get a shot, and it's going to sail just wide. And Cardozo making her way into the game now. Brockton escaping there.
We have a hilltopper that's slow to get up. I expect there will be a lot of that tonight in the heat. As Denell Davids gets ready to come back into the game. And now Denell Davids back into the game. She will replace number 12, Megan Ortendahl. Brockton unable to keep it in along the far sideline. Durfee throwing. Brockton taking possession right back. Trying to send it up for Madison Hendrigan. A little unsuccessful. Durfee sending it out of bounds. And Brockton with a throw in. The goal scorers, Janae Domanski Silva and Lena Marion, get ready to come back into the game for the boxers. This one sent all the way in on Viola Law 3. About 17 minutes remaining in the first half. one nothing boxers over the Hilltoppers. In a very, very, very hot night here at Marciano Stadium. Handball called against... Durfee, so a free kick for Olivia Mathelier and the boxers. Up to Kayla Murphy, who sends it up for Hendrigan. Now it's a foot race, and Durfee is able to chase it down and pop it out of bounds. Jayla Smith threw a few boxers and out the other side. Durfee able to take over. And now setting it up and it's an onside foot race and Danelle Davids is going to come away with it for Brockton. She sends it back to the senior goalkeeper for Brockton and Janae Domenci Silva is down and she's just tying her shoe in the middle of the field.
Murphy fighting for it on the far side. It's going to go out of bounds, and the boxer throwing deep, deep, deep in Hilltopper territory. But Durfee able to take possession. And send it out at least momentarily. And now it's Lena Marion who's got an open boxer on the other side. Marion comes away with it and it's going to be dove on by the Hilltoppers goalkeeper. So boxer free kick from about the 41 yard line. Durfee able to clear out immediately. Now Durfee with an opportunity as they try to get numbers in the boxer's zone. Number 20 tripped up as she was weaving in and out of boxers. That is Brittany Pavo, senior. Now Brockton with an opportunity. Kayla Murphy racing to it on the far sideline. Her cross for Marion, and it's going to go out the other side. Rather, Marion now is going to shank it through the uprights. But I believe we have an offsides call against the boxers. Brockton really pressuring offensively. There's about 12 minutes left now in the first half. Procton still winning. Oh, leading one to nothing over the Durfee Hilltoppers. A number of opportunities since that first goal from Jeanne de Manchi Silva. Now Domenci Silva's tripped up as Durfee sends it flying out of bounds. Give and go for the boxers as Domenci Silva finds some space and Durfee sends it right back out of bounds.
Smith shanking the pass out of bounds. Goal kick for the Hilltoppers is now there's 10 minutes left. Smith up to Murphy. Murphy off her back heel. Rather, that was Hendrigan passing it to Murphy. This one sent in on the Hilltoppers goalkeeper who makes the jumping save. Lara Cardozo trying to chase it down on the far side. Sends it out of bounds, so another goal key kick for the Hilltoppers. Now Murphy with a sliding shot is gonna be blocked away by the defense of the Hilltoppers. Sent out of bounds by Durfee, so another Brockton throw in. Marion turning on the Jets to get back defensively for this one as there's now six and a half minutes to go. So I believe we have an offsides called against Brockton. Serena De Silva into the game for Brockton with five and a half minutes to go. Our semi annual every half reminder that the clock on the scoreboard is unofficial time. The clock will stop with two minutes remaining. The official time is kept on the field by the referees.
This one sent all the way up in Marion. Couple of people collide. It's number two showing tremendous speed, Olivia Shaw. Or rather, number nine. Stephanie Alves, a defender with tremendous speed up the sideline. Still one nothing boxers, the unassisted goal from Jeanne Domanchi Silva. About twelve minutes into this first half. And the goalkeeper for Durfee. Able to pick this one up. In addition to the heat and the humidity here at Marciano Stadium tonight, there is no wind. So there's not even that slight bit of relief from the humidity and mugginess. But at least, at least the wasps have retreated inside for the night. Now Hendrigan and three boxers are going to be offsides as we've hit that magical time. Two minutes on the clock, official time kept on the field. Everyone knows the rules. We have a stopwatch going in the booth in estimation of how much time is left. And we have an injured boxer who just took a ball to the face and head trainer Jerry Connors immediately getting the cart and scary situation to hear at Marciano Stadium. We're going to stop the stopwatch with a minute and one second on it. What number's down? Uh, Kayla. Kayla, uh, Kayla Murphy is the injured boxer. Who will almost definitely enter at least concussion protocol take her to a dark room shine the flashlight in her eyes how many fingers am I holding up so Murphy has not moved since going down after taking that ball. We're being told they might end the first half. With this injury in add the stoppage time onto the second half would not be the worst idea is seeing 
one of your top scorers go down is not the best way. So take 10 minutes, recompose yourself, get the motivational speech going. The old Herb Brooks, 1980, Miracle on Ice. But Kayla Murphy is injured after taking a ball that was fresh off the foot of one of the Hilltoppers square in the face. And now she is up and hopping onto the back of the cart. And we are going to continue play in the first half. As Kayla Murphy is driven off. Good old drop kick, something we don't see too often here in soccer. Vanessa Dos Anjos is the player tasked with replacing Kayla Murphy. We've got maybe about 30 seconds left to Stopwatch is a little bit jaded. We kept it running for the injury. At least the first part of it. Viola Law 3 making it another save. Elena Marion showing some speed in front of the Durfee bench and unable to keep it in bounds. Now foot race on the far side and Durfee going to win it and sending it back to their goalkeeper with about 30 seconds to go here in the first half. Whistles blow, the first half has come to an end. The score, one to nothing. The Brockton Boxers leading big three division rival, the Durfee Hilltoppers, the lone goal scored by Jeanne Domenci Silva. But the big story, Kayla Murphy, who is in concussion protocol. We're gonna keep an eye on that and bring you second half action right after this. Good morning. Hope you all had a good weekend and are ready to be inspired. One quick thing I want to remind you guys to be studying. Major key alert. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Today we're talking about inspirational quotes. You want to get that paper? You better turn in that paper and get an A+. That's a major key. Another one. Another. Mogul talk. You want to reach the mountaintop? You got to go hard. To succeed, you have to believe. Stay focused, fly higher than the eagle. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise, Louise, can you give me an example of an inspirational quote from recent history? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at getschool.com. Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, soccer fans of all ages, welcome back into Marciano Stadium for second half action between the Durfee Hilltoppers and your Brockton Boxers. Once again, I'm Matt Dog, Matt Nelson, bringing you all the action high atop the press box 
here at Rocky Marciano Stadium. Decent amount of action so far. The score coming into the second half. One to nothing. Brockton on top of their big three divisional rival. The big story in the first half in stoppage time. Kayla Murphy, the boxers, uh, one of the top scorers for the Brockton boxers, took a kick to the face and is now in concussion protocol. And now it's a foot race, Alicia Tokeman unable to get there in time. So it'll be a boxer throwing deep in Hilltopper territory. Breaking news, because when news breaks, BCA and the Mad Dog break it. We're being told that Kayla Murphy has been taken out of the stadium by her parents and it is very likely they are headed to the hospital. So a crushing loss for the boxers who at one point might have thought that Murphy would be able to play the second half. Corner kick for the boxers, the first of the night. Hendrigan taking it out in front and a good save by the Durfee goalkeeper. So Brockton, if you're keeping score at home without two of their top scorers this season as Murphy has left the stadium and Gabriela Del Pico unable to suit up. Gabriela Del Pico, 30 goal scorer last year. By far the most in the big three. And I believe top five in Massachusetts. committed to the Harvard University as a sophomore, which is an incredible feat by itself. Congratulations to Gabby on that. Harvard asked that she play for a club team called Developmental Academy to refine her skills. And Developmental Academy has said, you cannot play for your public school. We are the only team you're allowed to play for, and so very, very smartly and wisely choosing her future over her high school has obliged with that request. And now Tokeman in on a semi-break. She launches a shot, and it's going to hit the post and go in. Alicia Tokeman unassisted. The Madison Hendrigan for the boxers. So it's Alicia Tokeman assisted by Madison Hendrigan. And that puts the boxers up two to nothing. A short five minutes into the second half. Two 
two nothing boxers five minutes into this second half. This one popped up on Viola Lothry, who makes the easy save. If you're just joining us, Again, the score 2 nothing. Brockton over big three divisional rival, the Durfee Hilltoppers, on a very, very warm night here at Marciano Stadium. Officially, it's now 76 degrees. It feels like 85. With bees, With bees and no wind. So if you feel bad for us, and poor Felix Nieves over here in the press box that has not been renovated since the 1970s. Call your counselor. Tell him we need a renovated press box up here with air conditioning. It's usually easier to bear earlier in the season when you're used to all the heat. It's been 60 degrees for the last week and a half. It's been full fall weather for the last really two weeks at least. And then all of a sudden, the eye of the storm were in that magical time between hurricanes. We, we had the after effects of Jose. Maria's coming up. And... It's 90 degrees. Welcome to New England. It's going to snow tomorrow. Just got a dirty look from one of our camera guys. To which I say, Mr. Trevor Simmons. Don't look at me with that tone of voice. We do have an all-star crew tonight, albeit a short-staffed crew. At the helm, the leader of the ship, stepping in for Paul Mandeville. Get the bugles out. It is King Aaron Tebow. This one's on sides to... Janae Dimitri Silva now up to Tokman who chips it just wide. And on camera, the AVC all volunteer crew on camera. Trevor Simmons, of course, the nephew of BCA delivery man, Mike the Postman Simmons. And Jacob, the soon-to-be former intern, of course, the hired talent, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. And if you think that's a great crew, wait till you see what we got on tap for Thursday night's game between BC High and Brockton right here at Marciano Stadium. Tokman trying to chip it back inbounds, or inside rather, to Jeanne Domenci Silva. Brockton with some personnel changes up front to make up for the loss of Kayla Murphy, who again took a ball squared to the face in the last two minutes of the first half, has been removed from the stadium by her parents. And one would presume taken to the hospital. She was in concussion protocol before that. Run it, run it. You 
Now Tokeman again creating pressure on the Hilltoppers. The Hilltoppers coming in with a record of 3-3-1. Brockton a measly 1-5, but Brockton has really been taking it to the Hilltoppers as Tokeman again chipping it to herself. Now out to Hendrigan. Hendrigan's shot is going to be saved by the Durfee goalkeeper. Excellent diving stop by the goalkeeper for the Hilltoppers. Now Jayla Smith intercepting this one at midfield and it's gonna be sent out of bounds by the boxers. This one sent all the way in on Tori Viola Lothry. We do have to give a shout out to the poor Brockton Public Schools employees who will be out here tomorrow morning at 7.30 a.m. For the safety and health of the fans here at Marciano Stadium and of course the camera crew. They're going to attack this wasp's nest. Sacrificing themselves, saying for the for the freedom and the flag of the United States of America to perform their duty, they're going to take out this wasp's nest. Two, Olivia, Shaw. Olivia Shaw making her way back into the game for the boxers. We were officially told that it is a wasp's nest. They look like yellow jackets, but we were told they're wasps, so. That one could get dangerous. I'm glad I'm not going to be here at 7.30 tomorrow morning. one sent all the way back on the senior goalkeeper for the boxers. Twenty six minutes remaining in the second half. Brockton up two to nothing over big three divisional rival the Durfee Hilltoppers. Donnell Davids chipping it up looking for Shaw finding I believe Hendrigan who gets it to Shaw. Now it is Kept in bounds and then shot out of bounds by Olivia Shaw. So Durfee takes over on downs. Number 24 coming into the game. Serena De Silva, the senior midfielder. He also listed as a defender. Janelle Davids run into no call. And now it's going to be off sides against the Hilltoppers. <laughs> Mathelier taking the free kick for the boxers. Now sent up ahead, and it's going to be offsides against the boxers.
So we're talking with PA announcer and official scorer Felix Nieves before the game about the anthem protests who have been all over the news. And something that I believe has been blown way out of proportion. Instead of talking about what these NFL players are protesting, we're talking about the protest. So kudos to the media for blowing the protest way out of proportion. That being said, of the hundreds of NFL players that took a knee or sat or remained in the locker room for the national anthem. And this is probably the only time you'll hear me say this. The Dallas Cowboys was my favorite display. I do now disclaimer. I do not agree with kneeling for the national anthem. I do find it disrespectful to veterans as we're going to have an onside play into three on one break for the boxers and just a little bit far ahead for Lena Marion. And quickly taken care of by the Durfee goalkeeper. I do not agree with kneeling or sitting for the national anthem. I find it is disrespectful to the veterans and those who fight for our country. That being said, there is something to protest for. So what the Dallas Cowboys did is they all kneeled down prior to the start of the National Anthem. And then as soon as the anthem started playing, they all stood up as a team and in honor. Kudos to Jerry Jones for joining his team in protest. And they locked arms during the anthem. And they said it's not to disrespect the flag or the country or the anthem or the veterans. It's a sign of unity in times that so desperately require it. To which I agree. If you would like to share your opinion, hit us up on Twitter at Brockton Channel. Use the hashtag BCA Sports. You can talk to us about professional sports, anthem protest, Brockton High Sports, anything, anything, and we will respond. We are about halfway through the second half. 2 nothing boxers on top of the 3-3-1 three, three Hilltoppers. I said Dos Anjos back in the game. on the topic of patriotism and things that people have fought and died for to give us the right to do really Brockton a 9% turnout on election day 9% of registered voters there's 45,000 registered voters in the city of Brockton 9% of that showed up to vote in the preliminary election. We couldn't even hit double digits. I get it. It's a preliminary election. There's no... There's no huge race. Like, last preliminary election we had, uh, I believe the presidential preliminary was, was on there. 9%? 9%. You know what grinds my gears? When people complain about politicians and how they're not doing their jobs, 
in how any random schmo on the street could do a better job than the current sitting official. And then 9% shows up to vote? Come on, Brockton. And that's what really grinds my gears. And now Tori Viola Lothary charging out of her net a good 35 yards out to break up that one. You talk about guts. Having confidence in your set of wheels like Tori Viola Lothary did right there. You now we have Boxer tripped up, and that'll be a penalty against the Hilltoppers. There's more substitutions. Alicia Tokeman and Lena Marion getting ready to come back into the game for the Hilltoppers. Of course, Lana Marion, the youngest daughter of John Marion. Of course, tuxedos by Marion. And every year gets incredibly pumped up about Santa Claus. Transforms his store into Edgar's department store. And he did that a little bit early this year because professional wrestler Mick Foley, Cactus Jack, Mankind, whatever name you want to call him, was here for a wrestling show. And turns out. He's a Santa Claus aficionado. Right, he went on the, the downtown tour of Brockton, saw James Edgar's original department store, got a history lesson from John Marion about Santa Claus, went into City Hall. I did not know that anybody in this country could talk Santa and actually hold it, hold the conversation with John Marion. And then Mick Foley comes to town and shows everyone up. Cactus Jack. The Mankind. And Socko. Now, I would have been slightly more impressed as we have another foot race. This one's going to be taken by Durfee and kicked out of bounds. I would have been slightly more impressed if that was Stone Cold Steve Austin shows up and starts melting over Santa Claus. As we have a timeout called, timeout called on the field. by Durfee, I believe. So Durfee... Calling their timeout, down two with 15 minutes left. Two to nothing, Brockton on top of their big three divisional rivals. Come out Thursday night, right here at Marciano Stadium, the Boston College High School Eagles come to town to face the Boxers men's soccer team. And then Friday night, the BCA Traveling Roadshow. Up to Harvard. 
We're going to have it as the Boxers football team faces BC High. BC High having construction done on their stadium. Thank the Lord. I heard it's supposed to rain, and that's not fun on Morrissey Boulevard right off of the harbor. And so we're going to Alumni Stadium at Harvard. BCA takes the Ivy League. And that game will be shown this weekend, so tune in. It's going to be a fantastic broadcast. Some of us on the BCA crew weren't quite smart enough to get into Ivy League schools. So we're going to feel a little bit smarter just being on the campus of Harvard University. If you have any good restaurant recommendations around Harvard, hit us up on Twitter, at Brockton Channel, hashtag BCA Sports. We're accepting any and all recommendations for things to do around Harvard for dinner. On Friday night. Of course, next week, the BCA Traveling Road Show continues as we go to the Hawk Bowl at Severian Brothers High School in Westwood. So for those keeping score at home, we've so far driven 50 miles each way to Lexington High School, home of the Minutemen, where the Revolutionary War started. We're going to Harvard in Boston. It's about 30, 35 miles from here. We're going to Westwood, which is good for another 25, 30 miles. New Bedford's on the list of away games this season. And that's another good 30 miles. The Mad Dog research team is spread out throughout the city tonight. We've got representation over at the Ward 5 meeting. And we're being told it's getting a little bit testy. Of course, on the agenda, the developments on Thatcher Street. That seems to be the thing people are taking issue with. New developments in the city of Brockton, new uh, apartments and condos and things like that. Of course, the one off of West Chestnut Street named Ianeri Way by real estate custodian for the city of Brockton, Ben Albanese. So that that's a whole nother discussion. Thatcher Street, they want, quote, educated young professionals to live in this proposed development which is going to be created by the nuns of St. Joseph's Manor. There's a lot going on, and if you don't like what's going on in the city of Brockton, just remember that 9% of you guys voted. Felix just asked me if I voted. The answer is yes. I did vote. There was only one race in my ward. I live in Ward 5. No preliminary for council. No preliminary for school committee. The only race on my ballot was mayor, and I did cast a vote. I'm one of the 9%. I was talking to someone who works at the polls. And 
the number of people that voted at the East Side Library, which is Ward 5, I believe, C. The number of people that voted. Now, keep in mind, polls open at 7 a.m. As this shot is saved, and eventually it trickles in, and that's another goal for the Brockton Boxers. Madison Hendrickson from 25 yards out, unassisted. So Hendrickson notching a goal and an assist on today's match. And the Boxers are now up 3 to nothing over big three divisional rivals, the Durfee Hilltoppers. The number of people that voted at 2 o'clock in the afternoon was 25. Vanessa Dos Anjos back in the game for Brockton as we approach 10 minutes remaining in the second half. Brockton up 3 to nothing over big three divisional rival the Durfee Hilltoppers. And now cleared up and out of bounds by Durfee. So Brockton with a throw in at the football goal line. Now another shot by Boxers, it's off the post. It got past a diving hilltopper goalkeeper hitting the left post. And Durfee escaping there. Shout out to the citizens of Brockton. Someone within the stadium has toked up. And the smell is wafting upward into the press box. Another save by the Durfee goalkeeper. Yeah, someone's someone's toking up on high school property. You know what? I'm not even mad. That takes guts. You're doing drugs on school property. At a school event. How does that happen? I mean, we've got seven minutes and 40 seconds left in the second half. You can't wait 10 minutes till you get home. Of course, we can never have just a normal day in the city of Brockton. A lot of you heard yesterday, or rather Sunday was the date this comment was posted, but Parks and Recreation Commissioner Stephen Pina commenting on a Fox 25 article about the Patriots national anthem protest saying expletive your expletives aren't paid to talk politics dance monkeys dance 
and the photo was of five African-American <laughs> Patriots players kneeling during the national anthem. Apparently, he meant it as every employee of the Patriots is a monkey in a sideshow and politics and sports should be separated. I normally agree that, Patri that not Patriots, politics and sports should be separate. Sports is an escape from what's going on in reality. But when the President of the United States, our fearless leader, says NFL owners should fire any SOB, that's a quote, it was in a tweet, that kneels during the National Anthem. Something has to be done. And again, shout out to the mainstream media Instead of talking about the issue that the players in the National Football League are protesting, we're talking about the protests themselves. It's like when Black Lives Matter blocked a highway. Instead of saying, instead of talking about and gearing the conversation towards the police are killing African Americans. We're talking about these 15 people that blocked the highway. By the way, if you want good entertainment before our fearless leader starts World War Three, go on Twitter. And besides following at Brockton Channel... And talking to us with hashtag BCA Sports. Follow at Real Donald Trump. That is the official account of the, the President of the United States. It's very entertaining to look at. Very entertaining. I'm not I'm not saying I agree with what he tweets. But a little sample. He said the leader, the president or the dictator of North Korea isn't going to be alive much longer. If that's not a declaration of war, I don't know what is. I get it. It's Twitter. But this is the president. Back to game action. It's the boxers up three to nothing over their divisional rival, the Durfee Hilltoppers, with now three minutes remaining in the second half. Another disclaimer. Clock stops at two minutes on the scoreboard. Official time kept on the field by the referees. We at the Mad Dog Research Team in the press box do keep a stopwatch, but my phone has 1% battery life left. Now Alicia Tokeman can't break free, but she still has possession deep in Hilltopper territory. Her shot is going to go off the outside of the apron and out of bounds. You've never heard of the outside of the apron? Take a puck in hockey, it bounces off the boards, ends up on the back of the net. It's the apron. Two minutes left, official time kept on the field. This might not be hockey, but a net is a net is a net. And therefore, the back of the net is the back of the net. It's called an apron. The skirt? 
We're being told by the prolific cinematographer that the back of the net should be called a skirt. I disagree. It skirts inward at the bottom. Thus, it's an apron. If you have an opinion on this matter, whether the back of the net should be called an apron or a skirt, hit us up on Twitter, at Brockton Channel, hashtag BCA Sports. The last thing we had tweeted to us was four orange polar bears. Use hashtag BCA Sports to see that. And a breakaway for the Hilltoppers. And Denell Davids able to catch up with this one. And now a shot is going to be offsides from the Hilltoppers. The question was posed by prolific cinematographer Aaron Tebow. What color is a polar bear skin? Hit him up on Twitter. At Aaron Tebow. As the stopwatch has died. We've got to have about 15 seconds left in this one. Refs looking at their watches. 3 nothing boxers on top of Durfee who are just trying to get one on the board here in stoppage time. There should be a decent amount of stoppage time added for that injury to Kayla Murphy. Again, taking a ball to the face at the end of the first half. And now is an opportunity. A shot is going to bounce in. And Brockton scoring in stoppage time. 4 nothing boxers over the Durfee Hilltoppers. I believe that was Vanessa Dos Anjos on the Brockton goal. It was number 13, Vanessa Dos Anjos from Janae Domenici Silva. So four nothing Brockton over big three divisional rivals. Brockton was supposed to have already played New Bedford, but rained out. As the whistle sound in this game has come to an end, a convincing win for the Brockton boxers who moved to two and five on the year. Durfee on the other hand falls to three, four and one. Four to nothing, the score. Brockton over Durfee. The goal scorer is Jeanne Domenici Silva. Vanessa Dos Anjos, Alicia Tokman, and Madison Hendrigan. Durfee with a clean sheet. Torreville Laffrey, a number of good saves, and that just about does it here for another BCA Sports presentation. Again, the final score. The Durfee Hilltoppers 0, the Brockton Boxers 4. They move to 1-0 in the Big 3 division. And for everyone here at BCA Sports, our director Aaron Tebow, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and we will see you next game.